and welcome back to Cheap and Green. You remember last week I was cleaning out my closet and uh, demoffing it. And one of the things I did was completely empty the closet. Once I did that, way in the back, I found some bathrobes that had been sitting there for, I don't know, how many years, but they've been sitting there a long time. As you can see, these bathrobes are monogrammed. They're monogrammed and they were a gift. So not only are they monogrammed with our extremely difficult to find names, but they were also a present. And yet, we never use them. Uh, we have had these, well, we've been here for 10 years and we, and we moved them. So I would say we would ha we've had them probably 15 years. 15 years we've had these bathrobes. Not only do we have two white cotton bathrobes that are monogram, but we also have another one uh, which is not monogram. So between the two of us, we actually have three white cotton terry cloth bathrobes that have been sitting in the back of the closet for a decade or more. Um, they take up a huge amount of room, and quite frankly, I don't actually like white cotton bathrobes. I know I'm supposed to like them, I want to like them, but I don't like them. They're heavy, and they're awkward, and they're chilly. I mean, there's always like drafts, right? I'd rather put on pajamas and like a sweater than wear one of these, you know, kind of drafty, awkward bathrobes. But we've hung on to them and hung on to them. And anyway, I've just been thinking a lot of things that you hang on to for all sorts of reasons. I guess it, it's sort of like the KonMari method, and I read a little bit of that book. But we have such emotional baggage and things, and these take up a huge amount of real estate. But, um, but I, you know, I feel bad about getting rid of them. But then I, I you know, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna store them for another, you know, 15, 20 years? Am I, it, it, will I be buried in this bathrobe? Is that my fate? Um, you know, it's very strange. And I was also thinking, um, a few weeks ago, I went to a seminar. It was um, put on by one of the decorators in my community and she was talking about decluttering and organizing and she actually offers seminars on that and workshops which is amazing. One of the things she said is in talking about um, is, I guess sort of heirloom furniture, not really heirlooms like valuable antiques or anything but just stuff that your parents give you, furniture that your parents give you dining room sets or side tables or, or whatever, you know, the stuff that they don't want anymore, they pass along to you. And, you know, this stuff could be lovely, it could be beautiful, but maybe it's just, it's not your style. It doesn't fit in your space, it's too big, it's too little. It's impractical for your lifestyle, but yet we feel bad, you know, we, we've taken this stuff on. And, you know, I'm sure that our family does not mean to weight us down with this stuff. They, they want to help, right? They want to be helpful. But somehow we end up with a house full of mismatched stuff and it doesn't work for us. And it ends up being a burden. So I think, in a way, it's better if we kind of clean slate and just find things that actually suit what's happening with our lives right now. Like, for example, we had um, a beautiful antique Duncan Fife dining room set that my mom found and hand finished and recovered and everything. And it was, it was beautiful. I always loved it. It was in our house growing up. But the chairs were so fragile. And actually, they were so fragile that they broke a lot and they were repaired, so the sides of them have many, many different kinds of wood and they were patched, and, uh, and yet we hung on, we hung on, we hung on. Um, so we got, and then of course one chair fatally broke and could not be repaired, so then we had three chairs. And that was awkward, because there were three of us. And um, eventually we just thought, you know, like, why, why are we doing this? Every time you sat down, you were, you were worried, you know, and the chairs made alarming creaking sounds when you were sitting on them. And the table was starting to loosen up. So, 
it would kind of rock and sway a bit, you know? So eating at the table, it was like a circus act, you know? You were, you were constantly afraid that something was going to go. Any minute, something's going to go. But it's a family piece, you know? It was in my childhood home, and I loved it. But, you know, it was ridiculous. It was getting ridiculous. So eventually, after much soul-searching, we passed it along to my cousin, who had, like, no furniture at all. She had uh, just graduated school, and she had nothing. And she loved it, and she was so happy. And we, you know, we were easily able to replace it with... Thing, I think for the whole set, including the chairs, maybe a hundred dollars, you know, like a hundred dollars to have a sturdy table and comfortable chairs that we feel, you know, we feel relaxed when we sit down to eat. So yeah, I think it's interesting that you just kind of go along this path and you don't step back and question, where's all this emotion coming from? Like, it's a chair. It does not love me back. It's just a chair. But uh, yes, so back to the bathrobes. So these bathrobes are going to go to Goodwill. And, you know, some intrepid person can pick out the stitching or, you know, not, whatever, maybe somebody named Rochelle out there will be excited and delighted to find a bathrobe with her name on it and garner, you know. And they will not be taking up a huge amount of space in my closet. I won't feel bad about not using them because I do. I feel bad. Why would I have something in my house that I'm not using, you know? So I am delighted to free up some space in my closet that I can put things that I actually use and like and uh, pass these, you know, these really nice high quality bathrobes on to somebody who actually really likes bathrobes and that person is not me. I know that I am way too sentimental about things and other people maybe um, are, find this process a little bit easier. But whether you use the KonMari method or you come up with a method of something on your own, uh, I think it's important to examine why you're hanging on to something that isn't working for you, why, why you know, this article of clothing or that table or whatever is still in your house and yet is awkward and you don't even really like it. So it's, uh, it's good because, you know, your house costs a lot of money and the real estate in your house costs a lot of money. So you might as well fill it with things that you love and that actually work for you. So that's it for me for this week. I am off to Goodwill to drop these off and actually a trunk full of other stuff that is no longer working for me. I hope that you have a great week and I hope to see you next time on Cheap and Green. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram.